Hey there, Python trainer Ruben Lerner here. And I got a question from Roger, a subscriber to my Better Developers mailing list. And he asks, what's the difference between comments and doc strings? What are the similarities and differences between them? So let's talk about this a little bit. Let's talk first about comments and we'll talk about doc strings and then we'll compare them. So if I write Python code, x equals 100, def hello name return so this hello name. In all these cases, what's happening? Well, I want the code to execute. The code is meant for Python to actually do something. In the first case, to define a variable x and assign it 100. In the second case, to define a function. And here I can then say, hello world. And now I want it to actually run that function. In all these cases, Python takes whatever I wrote, turns it into bytecodes. It actually compiles my code into internal bytecodes, and then it runs those bytecodes. In the case of the function, it holds on to those bytecodes later on. Now, it is absolutely positively true that when you write code, you should be thinking about the people who will be reading it later on and maintaining it later on, because it's much, much easier to write code than to maintain code. So that readability, very important. So use long variable names, use long function names. But sometimes we need to give a little bit of an assistance. It's not enough to just write clear code. We sometimes need to tell people what we're doing and more importantly, why we're doing it. And for that, we have comments. So I can write a comment and in Python a comment is hash mark until the end of the line. So this is a friendly function. All right, that's a very, very useless comment. Why? It doesn't give us any information we could use about in order to maintain the function. But it is a comment, right? It's legitimately a comment. And how does Python see a comment? That's the thing, Python doesn't. It completely and utterly ignores them. When we turn our functions into bytecodes, the comments are thrown away. They are only for the maintainers and they're to make our, uh, uh, make our code easier to understand, easier to maintain. So what should you be writing in your comments and who are your comments aimed for? Your comments are aimed for the people, aimed at the people who are going to be maintaining the function in this case, maintaining your module, maintaining your code. It's like the, not the owner's manual for a car, rather it's like the manual that is for the people who will be fixing your car, who really need to understand the internals. So what exactly, what would I do here, for example? Well, maybe I would explain why I'm doing something. Don't say something like return a string with the user's name. That is really, really useless. That's not going to help anyone at all. Right? We can already see that we've got an F string. We already see that we've got the name there. But we can say here something like, you know, return a string instead of printing it for greater flexibility. Now, that's still not a fantastic comment, but at least it gives an insight into the thinking. What were we planning to do, thinking to do? And so it gives some better sense of why we wrote the way we did. And of course, there are lots of places in code, especially older code, where you'll see things like, don't touch this unless you know what you're doing. You know, or something like, you know, here be dragons. You don't want to do that, but people do it all the time. Okay, so that's comments. And you should comment, I think, as little as possible because I found that people use comments as a crutch. I found that when you use comments in your code, you're less likely to use good variable, good function names, good other things to make your code readable. But should you use comments? Yeah, no comments is I think a little extreme and unnecessary. So definitely include comments. Now some people complain that you can't have comments that stretch over one line, more than one line. If I have here, you know, comment, you know, comment one, comment two, and comment three, yeah, well, that's kind of annoying, but that's just the way it is. You could, in theory, use a triple quoted string to go across several lines. I really dislike that, but I know that many people do it. Okay, so those are comments. So comment only on why, not what. Comment less rather than more in order to um, sort of force yourself to write clearer code. And write the comments that are aimed for the maintainers of the code. So what's a doc string then? Well, let's take our function here. Hello. And if I define my function, and I'm not quite sure how to use it, so I'm gonna say here, help on hello. And I hear that it's, well, I find out from running help on it, it's a function, and it takes one argument, and the parameter is called name, but I don't know much else about it. So this is where a doc string comes in. A doc string is a documentation string. It is only there if you define it. So you actually need to do this. It's traditionally a triple quoted string, and it is aimed at the people who will be using your function, not the people who will be maintaining your function. Big difference. 
Imagine you, the owner of your car, versus the garage that fixes your car. Not the same audience. So the comments can go into deeper technical detail. The doc string really should be, how do you use this function? What does it do? So, you know, returns a string with a friendly greeting. Now, back when I was taking um, uh, software engineering in my university days, a long, long time ago, our professor told us that documentation for the user, API docs, should include three things. What does it expect? Expects, or I should say, yeah, expects, and modifies and returns. And it turns out this combination is great to have in the documentation. So what does this expect? Expects a string. Was it modified? Nothing. And was it returned? A string with a greeting. Now this is again pretty bare bones, but it's a pretty bare bones function. So how much documentation do we really need? Notice once again it's a triple quoted string, even if it's only going to be one line long, but you'll typically want to write more than that. After I've written this function, um, now comments were thrown out by the byte compiler, but the doc string is actually kept around. It's kept around in Dunder doc on our function object. See, it was just like grabbed and put over there. And if I run my function, no difference whatsoever. But if I say now help on the function, help on hello, we will get our help and we'll find out how we should run it and who we should, what we should do with it. Um, if you, of course, want, you can put in additional stuff in the doc string. And there are doc strings for classes and doc strings for modules as well. Um, and most of the code checkers, like PyLint and PyFlakes, will actually sort of ding you a little bit and scold you if you don't include a doc string. So make sure to include doc strings on all of your functions, modules, and classes. I hope that that was a good introduction to doc strings versus comments. I hope that you will indeed comment your code. And you should also join my Better Developers list. It's at betterdevelopersweekly.com. Send me questions, send me comments. I love to hear from people around the world. And I'll be back soon with more videos and explanations.